Hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Please hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet subscribed. I will be very grateful for that. All right, so now that we've done all the preliminary issues here, it's time to read data from the database and bring it here. But before we do that, let me just add one more item here because I only have one product, but that's not cool. Let's add another one, shall we? Let me browse for images and see what I've got. That way I can um, decide. Let's see uh, crisps here. Crisps, crisps, yes. Barcode, let it generate on its own. I'll put 100 quantity. Let's put, uh, this is a $4.99. Oh, <laughs> it will not allow me to do that. Uh, yes. So let's save that. And there we go. So we have the crisps. Uh, let's add one more. And let me browse for an image. Uh, what else do I have? Let's put, we do have a burger, but why do I have the wrong image for a burger anyway? This is biscuits. Oh, okay. So we don't have a burger. So let's add a burger. Let's see, burger. Let's add a price, $10, 100 in quantity, and let's save. Mm -hmm. Very good. Let's also add one more just to see if the barcode will respect when we add an actual barcode. So in this barcode, I'll say one, two, three, four. That would be my own custom barcode. And what else? I had more images than this, right? I remember very well getting more images. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't have food images in the mood. What's this? So good. Whatever this so good is. Just say so good. So good. Milk. I think it's milk. 100. Uh, let's put $20. And uh, let's see if it will respect this barcode. Save. And it does so. Very good. Okay, so we have some uh, nice products here. Very cool. Now we will need to read these products from um, from the database. Now the thing is, um, this cropping is happening every time we load uh, uh, images here, right? So the crop, every time we reload this page, the whole cropping process repeats itself. So this is what we were doing here. Oh, and by the way, if I go to my um, uploads folder, you will see that there are cropped versions of these images. This one is 320 KB, but this one is 38. So this is good. But there are times when uh, you see like the original here is 20 kilobytes, but the cropped version is 36. So the, um, that's because sometimes when the um, the resolutions are quite close with the original because sometimes you have original files that are smaller than the cropped version that you're creating because you can have an original 200 pixel and then you're cropping to 400 then that will increase the size the file size but keep in mind that you can always change the quality of your images from here just try a few numbers here like 75 percent 60 percent that will affect the file size as well so just adjust those for reduced quality, depending on how small your um, your cropped images should be. So just give it a test run and see. Now, what I don't want is every time we are asked to crop, to crop, to keep cropping images that already exist, right? That's a waste of processing power. So what we'll do is the moment we get the cropped file, let me remove this. The moment we get the crop file, let's check if it exists or not. So if it does exist, let's just return the file name and not for, uh, bother with trying to crop it since it's already there. So I'm going to say if file exists like so, uh, the cropped file like this, if the file exists, then return. So what do I return? The cropped file. So let's do return cropped file simple and straightforward. This way we avoid uh, cropping every time. 
so it still works and it will crop new files as requested okay great so back now to the point of sale here this is the home page and i want to show how to read data using ajax because we're going to be using that quite a bit so what we'll do is let's go to the home view page there it is this is the page right here that contains all that data so what i want to do is read from the same file so we'll use some javascript and you can choose either to put the javascript right here or after the uh, let's try and put it at the top like so so i'm going to uh, create a function so now we are not using php anymore we are using javascript okay so this is javascript that's why we are putting script tags here and there so javascript runs only in the browser php runs on the server so this is important to note that um, php runs on the server javascript runs in the browser so what this means is that these functions you never see them in uh, your browser because by the time the file gets to your browser it only contains php and none of this but this you will see in your browser so let's try this and say function uh, get data like so so i'm creating a function here now javascript is not like php in many ways so keep that in mind let's refresh and i will inspect the element so i've right clicked anywhere on a white space and say inspect because i just want to see the console so if you are seeing a lot of this just remove the warnings and then it will be clean like so but if i go to my inspector here this is what shows me what the page contains as you can see if i'm scrolling here it shows me what's on the page now if i go down here you will see that there is a script tag down here and this one also so this is the one that i'm interested in because it has function get data that we created but everything else like this function from php is not there if you observe you can see it all you will see is an actual uh, footer right yes because it's been evaluated to html before coming down here so just keep that in mind um, everything you put here is seen by the user so the user can manipulate this and make your website insecure so it's important never to use never to put sensitive data here so for example it's a bad idea to connect to the database using javascript because somebody can easily see your database code from here so we do the connection to the database in php because php is never shown to the user so this is why we're going to use what is known as ajax so we'll send a few pieces of data to the php and then the php will do the connection to the database and all that but before we do that let's just try and echo out a simple message that will come from the php side of things so why the uh, the reason why we are using javascript here is because i want to be able to retrieve data as i search here if i type here i want it to update in real time now that means i cannot uh, refresh my page while doing that because if i refresh the page then this information is gone so i just want to type and search for a product and let it show here without having to refresh the whole page so in order to do that i can get javascript to send that information for me because javascript runs in the uh, in the browser i can have it get this information and send it to php and then php will check in the database and then return that data to javascript which will then display it here in real time so hopefully that is understood what i'm trying to do so let's just send a simple message to the php version of this page so we are sending this message to the same page it's like the way we do it uh, on the sign up page where when we click uh, sign up we are posting to the same exact page so even in this case i want to send a message to the same exact page but on the php side of things 
Now, it's not mandatory to send, to send to the same page, just like you can post to another page, but it just makes things a little bit easier, I guess, in my opinion. But we can create a separate file which receives all the Ajax requests, and that's not a big deal either. So let's try and see what options we have. Maybe creating a separate file is nice uh, for reasons I will show you. So let's try here. Uh, we need to create an XML Ajax object, okay, in order to do this. So to create the object is simple. We just say var and say, uh, I'm going to call it Ajax. This is just a variable, so you can call it anything. You have to use the new keyword because this is a class. So we'll say XML HTTP request. So take care of the... Um, the capitalization here otherwise it won't work now if you see it look like this then it hasn't worked you have missed something so these tt should be small letters so xml http should also be small and there we go so it changes to show you that that's correct yes now i have an ajax thingy so all i need to do is open it and then send some files Okay, so you see in JavaScript, instead of uh, using this, we use the dot. Okay, so everything is an object in here. So everything is dot something of its property. So Ajax dot open, that's a method. These are functions that exist inside this XML HTTP request. So they are functions that exist there. That's why we are doing Ajax dot open. We are running that function. Ajax dot send, we are running that function. Okay, now sending needs some data. Now you can send without sending any data actually. So we'll leave it there, but open is important. You have to tell it what method you're using, either the post or the get. But really it doesn't matter. Both to me are the same. I normally just use the post. And then here you tell it what file you are sending to. In this case, it's the index.php, but we need to tell it the page name is equal to, uh, which is home. That's where we are sending, right? So that's the link we are sending to. Now, since that page is exactly this page, you can omit this completely by putting an empty string and it will know to send to the same page. Then here, let's put true, which means it should run in the background. Uh, the default is false, which means once this request is running, the user interface will freeze but it's always better to not allow it to freeze that way the user doesn't get frustrated and this is all we need actually but we need to get a response so we need to listen for a response before we even send so let's add an event listener so we say add ajax dot add event listener what are we listening for we are listening for a ready state change that's the event that is given by the this and once we get that, we want to run an anonymous function like this. Okay, so we've added an event listener. Let's put an E there just in case we need the event. Who knows? So function like this. Now, since I want to put a lot of code in this function, I will do this. And all I want to do is echo the result. So the result always lives in the Ajax.response text. Now there's also a response JSON and, and the like, but response text will do just fine. Now echo is obviously for PHP, so I need to use the alert instead, which is for JavaScript. Okay, great. So get data. I want to run it immediately. I open the page. Aha. Uh -huh. So instead of alert actually let's do console.log mm -hmm. in fact let me not run this i'll run it in the console okay so what i'm doing here is re requesting a load of the same page now the way ajax works is that whatever page you've requested anything that was echoed on that page will be returned as a result now echo means html 
So it means it's going to return all this HTML you see here as a result. Okay, so let's see that in action. Let me refresh. Let's go to inspect. Let's go to the console. You see the console is empty. But here, if I click run, now if you don't see this page here, it's probably because you have it like this. So even this will work, but if you click there, you see a page where you can add multiple lines instead of just run one line. But let's do it here anyway. I'm going to say send data. So I'm telling it to run this function. So I'm going to press enter. Send data is not defined. Okay, so it's actually get data, right? My bad. I'll run it. Boom. And this is the result I see. The same page has been returned, which means things worked very well indeed, because you can see now I've returned HTML document, my post, which is exactly the same page we are on. Okay, but this is not very useful, so let's make it useful in the next video.